योग कर्मसु कौशल नमस्कार मित्रों टुडे वी था डॉक्टर नैनेश मोदी ही इज वर्किंग एज एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बॉटनिक गुजरात यूनिवर्सिटी ही हैज 26 सिक्स ईयर टीचिंग एक्सपीरियंस एंड 10 ईयर्स रिसर्च एक्सपीरियंस he completed the two major project and he published 23 research paper and many books he presented many research paper in national and international conference uh, today he is talk on uh, carbon foot uh, sir i welcome you on behalf of hrdc and all the participants i request to dr nainesh modi sir please uh, deliver his session dr nainesh sir hello and warm welcome to each and every one uh today we are going to discuss about the carbon footprint i know many of you may have not heard this word carbon footprint few of you may have heard carbon footprint but we'll discuss about this carbon footprint today but to understand this carbon footprint first of all we'll have to go through this uh, global warming and climate change and then and then only we will be very comfortable to understand the effects of carbon footprint and how can we prevent uh, or how can we reduce carbon footprint so let us begin with pvd so i am dr nainesh modi associate professor at department of botany bioinformatics and climate change impacts management school of sciences gujarat university namdabad today before moving towards the carbon footprint let us understand what is global warming so global warming is very much important as far as our daily life is concerned and our future is concerned it is a phenomenon of climate change characterized by a general increase in average temperature of the earth see general increase in average temperatures it is not that every time temperature will increase but the average temperature will increase which modifies the weather balance and the ecosystem for a longer time so it will modify the weather balance you can uh, you can say that or you you may have observed that uh, weather is little bit found to be uh, imbalanced nowadays at certain places you will find a uh, very huge quantity of uh, rainfall sudden rainfall and in a in a huge quantity while at certain places the soil is again uh, still thirsty so this is in balance you also feel uh, some particular kind of events you have you may have observed that they have increased in numbers like uh, cyclones or tsunami and all those things they, are, they have been little bit increased uh, when we compare it to the previous decades even it also affects the ecosystem for a long time what is an ecosystem an ecosystem that word was actually given by a scientist named odum odum gave the idea about the ecosystem see there are two types of things in this world living things and non living things living thing include animals including human being all kind of plants from smaller algae to huge sequoia and all kind of microorganisms these are included in living beings and non living beings means all things surrounding us particularly majority like water means water air light temperature these all things are 
non living things including our soil so oldham explained it like that ki all the living beings they generally interact with their non living beings and in a vice versa non living beings also interact with the living things so this interaction of this living and non living things they create or they develop a system and such system is named as ecosystem such definition was given by odom so this ecosystem is also affected it also showing some effect okay on its own due to such global warming so global warming can cause effect to ecosystem it can cause weather imbalance it can modify the weather imbalance so and uh, uh, global temperature also increases so global warming is the name given by scientists for a gradual increase in temperature of the earth's surface that has worsened since the industrial revolution in last century you may know that industrial revolution started in western countries particularly in europe and uh even in uh, even in europe the great britain germany and all these countries they started such things industrial revolution or they started uh, just developing such industries actually they started this industries to uh, give much better products to human beings okay that was actually good thing actually good idea behind that was this uh, that we cannot uh, provide each and everything to each and every person of this in increasing population of the world so to cope up with, with such problem we should produce things much faster and to produce much thing faster uh, we should go for the industries okay so in such way industries has uh, has began and then after as we were under their rule our india also uh, started the smaller or bigger industries everyone knows about our own problems particular our problem is the increasing population and to fulfill needs of such increasing population you cannot produce things slowly you have to produce such things faster and faster and for that you require industries and to fulfill such things to fulfill such requirements we we are developing small scale to large scale industries all over our country and on the contrary we are increasing pollution okay so which thing is uh, important how which uh, which thing should be given importance that we all have to decide okay nobody will say that industries are bad or nobody will say that industries are good both things are there they are good for our uh, requirements but on the contrary they may cause much damage to the environment ecosystem they cause this global warming but remember industries only are not responsible for this global warming remember this thing that is one segment okay there are many other things where many other human activities which are also affecting the temperature of the earth okay particularly over last two or three decades that effect has become more remarkable see you may have felt that uh, every summer is little warmer than the previous summer everyone ha may have uh, so felt this, such things so day by day gradually a minute or a small change in temperature is there okay day by day every year by year or season by season it is increasing increasing and increasing 
So there are evidences for this. Okay, the a, a, a evidence exists that most of this global warming has been caused by human activities. That is clear cut. That human activities is that is only responsible thing for global warming. Nothing else, because our Earth, according to scientists, the Earth uh, was actually uh, that born before 500 crore years. Okay, 450 to 500 crore years back, the our uh, Earth existed, and before uh, 200 years, 200 crore years, sorry, 200 crore years back the first organism came on this earth how does it came we are not going to study those things today but since last 200 crore years organisms are living on this earth and they have not changed much okay the environmental things remain constant according to their needs only but during last few decades we have changed in a in a very huge proportion all the things we have altered many things we have altered not when not we can say all but many things we have altered we have started uh, uh, artificial rains also we can produce uh, rains we can do many things okay but uh, many things of this uh, entire activity of human beings are harmful to this uh, environment and to the entire ecosystem it is not only harmful to human beings but it is also harming all the organisms including other animals wild animals domestic animals even plants and not only organisms but it is also affecting the soil it is all also affecting the air it is also affecting water and everything okay so you can see the pollution in water and air that is due to only human activities and i must i must say that only industry is not responsible for this each and every indiv individual is responsible for this global warming okay and particularly certain gases are responsible for uh, this uh, temperature rise and such gases are generally named as greenhouse gases and greenhouse gases examples of greenhouse gases are carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide like that okay so these are the gases which we produce every day okay directly by ourselves or our activities or indirectly right so and these things these gases including this one one or two more gases you may include like cfc uh, which is generally used in the refrigeration like our refrigerator and this air conditioners and everything we generally use such gases to uh, cool things okay so these gases uh, carbon dioxide methane nitrous nitrous oxide and cfcs they are the they play a major role in uh, temperature increase in the uh, world hence they are named as greenhouse gases the evidence for global warming and climate change. let us discuss about this in fact the average temperature of the planet has increased by 0.8 degrees celsius okay so you cannot uh, consider this fahrenheit because i have taken this uh, uh, from a website where uh, something is something some problem is there in this uh, fahrenheit there must be a uh, decibel problem so we will just discuss about this in the celsius so average temperature of planet has increased 0.8 degrees celsius compared to the end of the 19th century when 
we compare the temperature of the end of the 19th century and the end of the 20th century there is a average increase of 0 0.08 degrees celsius each of the last three decades has been warmer than all previous decades since last since, uh, since the beginning okay so particular last three decades of 20th century and these two decades of our 21st century they are every time warmer warmer and warmer okay at the pace of current co2 emission scientists expect an increase of between 1.5 degree and 5.1.5 to 5.3 degree celsius in average temperature by 2100 so in the end of 21st century the average temperature may have increased 1.5 degree celsius to up to 5.3 degrees celsius now you can imagine the if uh, you are living in delhi or you are living in a place hot place like andamad or chennai now you can understand already in summer we are we are touching 45 46 47 degrees celsius and if, if it increase to 5 degree more then it will be 50 or 51 or 52 degrees celsius in summer now you can understand what will be the difference every one degree celsius increase in every one degree celsius that is very much difficult to face or to survive in such condition you you may have observed that the number of air conditions or number of houses having air conditions they are increasing year by year so previous in uh, uh, 10 years back the air condition was a uh, luxury but now it it has become necessity why because the increasing temperature the temperature is increasing in such a way that it is unbearable for us okay so this is the estimation of scientists right that it may increase our temperature may increase 1.5 degrees celsius to 5.3 degrees celsius in the end of this 21st century if no action is taken it would have harmful consequences to humanity and the entire biosphere so it is not going to harm humans also, only it is going to harm humans but going to harm all also going to harm the other organisms now you can see you can think that if there is an increasing temperature then we will have centrally ac house or centrally ac air conditioner our offices and everything but uh, we can solve our problem what about the other organisms what about those street dogs what about those tigers and lions living in forests and what about uh, the plants okay will be will be they able to survive in such uh, conditions and if plant will not survive who will survive so it's a major threat to our life so average annual temperature in the arctic has increased by about one degree celsius over the last century see arctic arctic region is very much important as far as the glaciers are concerned and their temperature is also increased by one degree celsius in last century one degree celsius increase in one degree celsius temperature that will cause you can understand ice is going to melt okay and those melting ice will create more problem not in that arctic region but at our sea source okay glaciers are retreating in many mountain areas of the world even in our himalayas and in Alps, and all those mountain areas covered by the such glaciers they are facing such problem that glaciers are melting and due to such uh, melting of glaciers there will be uh, floods in rivers the oceans the surface of ocean will increase okay 
for the example since 1850 the glaciers of the european alps have lost about 30 to 40% of their surface area and about half of their volume see 30 to 40% of their surface area they have lost and about half of their total volume they have lost since 1850 now you can understand the total effect is on the earth okay possible effect from 1850 we have just passed 170 years half of the glaciers we have already lost okay total volume in alps what will happen after 50 years right 20000 square kilometers of fresh water ice melted in the arctic between 1965 and 19, 1995 so between the this 30 years or 32 years 20000 square kilometer of fresh water ice that has melted you can imagine okay so uh, we are losing in very rapid pace a kattenberg at all 1969 sorry 1996 it uh, climate model simulations predict an increase in average surface air temperature of about 2.5 degrees celsius by the year 2100 so this is generally uh, average of the previous uh, figures we discussed according to carl et al 1997 the likelihood of killer heat waves during the warm season will increase so he 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 just uh, 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 proposed these things in 1997 and even in 1900 and sorry 21 uh, 2020 we are facing such things okay every year by year such uh, uh, heat wave were much stronger than the previous so the scientists proved these things quite earlier sea temperature has risen by on average 0.5 degree celsius over the last 40 years okay average increase in sea temperature is 0.5 degree celsius worldwide measurement from tidal okay gauges indicate that sea level has risen between 10 to 10 and 25 cm meters during the last 100 years so the sea level is increasing now you can you can understand that if the sea level increases the water in the sea will come or will cover your land on sea shores someone has already predicted something about the uh, large metro cities on sea shores like mumbai and many more even they they have some estimation of after few decades such cities are going to face huge problems because of such increase in level of sea uh, oceans okay so oceans will increase so uh, that's uh, their height okay and that sea level increase the sea level uh, will uh, damage the coastal regions okay so this is the these are the effects of global warming global surface temperature have risen about 0.7 degree celsius in past 100 years surface temperature okay 11 of the last 12 years rank among the 12 warmest years on record for global temperature see last 11 years out of 12 years they are the warmest years as i told you every year you are facing much and much heat even myself okay since 1975 the increase of the five year mean temperature is about 0.5 degree celsius See, average 
temperature of five years that has increased 0.5 degrees Celsius since 1975. A rate that is faster than for any previous period of equal length. So we are moving quite rapidly. Okay. In the history of world, the IPCC second assessment report estimates that sea levels will rise by approximately 49 centimeter for the next 100 years. It is going to increase the sea level by 49 centimeter. Okay. This is estimation according to the uh, previous rate in uh, this 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 estimation was given in uh, previous century in the end of previous century but that was that was again i said that was uh, that was based on uh, activities of uh, that time but we have we have increased our uh, activities we have increased uh, using uh, or burning of fossil fuel we have increased the uh, emission of carbon dioxide from industries. We have increased the uh, uh, emission of methane also. So this estimate is of just 49 centimeter, but it may reach to 80 centimeter or it may reach to 110 to 20 centimeters. Due to our pace, we are moving towards the end little faster than it was predicted okay sea level rise will sea level rise will melt, uh, will lead to increase coastal fold flood floodings as you know coastal flooding as we discussed just earlier that coastal flooding that we, that will be caused by this uh, sea level increase okay further melting of arctic ice caps at the current rate could be sufficient to turn off the ocean currents that drive the gulf stream which keeps britain up to six degrees celsius warmer than it would otherwise be so you can understand that things are not going to remain in our control even britain the temperature of Britain, if it can increase up to 6 degrees Celsius, then you can think about the other countries, warmer countries like Asian countries and African countries. What will ha happen to them? And if, if, as I said earlier, if a 5 degrees Celsius, increase in 5 degrees Celsius only, then you can imagine the conditions. So, these things are going to happen very much it is going to damage you much not only you but entire all of us if we do not do nothing to control such things what will happen rising global temperatures will cause sea level to rise as we all, uh, discussed earlier that will alter local climate conditions local climate climate conditions can be uh, altered affecting forests crop yields and water supplies just just think about this alter local con climate conditions we discussed these things okay affecting forests you see in our houses most of the furniture that is made up of wood or wooden products If there are no forests, then we will not able to just buy a new furniture. Okay, so just a simple example. It will affect the crop yield. Whatever we eat, most of the things they come from the crops produced by our farmers. Someone will say, I just eat less vegetables and I'm much, much more, I eat much more non-veg things. 
but those non veg things particularly like chicken what is the source of their food okay you can think that every entire entire uh, our living system that depends on plants directly or indirectly for food okay and it is also going to affect the water supplies there may be drought at some places in the globe and uh, some at some other places there will be flood so there will be total imbalance it may also affect human health animals and many types of ecosystems okay so it is going to damage many things and going to affect many organisms including human animals and plants and even microorganisms nowadays many people know <laughs> things about microorganisms okay we'll not discuss those things deserts may expand in some of our countryside may be permanently altered as i said earlier if you will lose plants then you will lose forest then those forest areas may convert into desert or may convert into grassland or something else and if forest is not there then how will you find the rain there will be no rain or if there is a rain but that that rain will just uh, deliver the water in a particular area okay it will not distribute the water into uh, surroundings so total imbalance will be there in the weather now tell me what can i do i am not a industrialist okay i am not eating much uh, uh, so my needs are very less i am just uh, going to my working place by my own car i use things which i require, which i need i have a just small uh, apartment or a bungalow and just i'm using air conditions i'm using the tube lights and everything my needs are not much more i will say i will say such things and you may say okay uh, but when world leaders when they meet for such a issue they find many things wrong in ourselves also okay world leaders meet in copenhagen came to an agreement on global emission cuts they came to an just agreement that we must cut the global emission emission of such greenhouse gases but we can initiate the battle to save the earth much before they execute the agreement okay firstly we need to recognize how we personally impact global warming particular my impact on global warming everybody feels that i am not responsible for global warming okay everybody feels that but everybody is is the actual responsible for the global warming okay and carbon footprint will show us how to minimize our impact whatever impact we are doing we are not going to nullify it we are not going to uh, lower down it to zero but we certainly can decrease it okay certainly we can decrease it we can minimize it okay and we can start it today hmm? so how can we decrease or minimize our own impact on global warming okay so you must calculate your own carbon footprint okay first you calculate your own carbon footprint and then you will understand 
that uh, i am also uh, one of the factor for the serious problem of global warming and let me try to reduce it but you will reduce it when you understand it okay and you will also uh, ask your subordinates or your children or your family members even your uh, colleagues you can uh, just uh, educate them and you can uh, help the human kind to decrease the global warming because it is not a not an issue of a particular one country or a particular one man only it is issue of entire uh, biosphere all of us will are, are going to suffer so let us start decreasing or minimizing our carbon footprint.